Hi everyone, David Aragona here with Craig Mulkowski, and we are taking a look at a Breeders' Cup prep that will be taking a place on Saturday at Churchill Downs. It is the Grade 3 Lucas Classic going a mile and an eighth on their main track there, and this one is going to feature a heavy favorite. A two to five on the morning line is the number two, Nick's go, and Craig, he looks right now like one of the leading contenders for the Breeders' Cup Classic, and this just looks like it's going to be a public workout for him. That's how they're orchestrating it. He's really not facing a horse that's in the same league as him in this race. No, not at all. And, and I don't think this race is going to tell us a whole bunch. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk plenty about the Breeders' Cup Classic later on, but it just looks like there isn't a whole lot of competition for him either earlier in, in the race or later on. So I fully expect him to just canter around the track and win pretty easily. But I do think there's some things worth discussing in here. Yeah, let's talk a few, about a few of the contenders in this race. Before we get started, just, let's just take a look at the field for this race as we throw up these six runners. And you see two to five on the morning line is the number two, Nick's go. The only hor other horse at single digits is the number three, Tacitus, at five to two. The others are all very big prices in this race. We'll see how the public bets this one. But no doubt Nick's go is going to be a heavy favorite when all is said and done. As for the time form U.S. pace projector, Nick's go has a ton of early speed, so no surprise to see him out depicted on the front end. No, it would be hard to imagine him not getting the lead. Uh, it would almost be like something had to go very wrong. Uh, either he just doesn't break out of the gate or, you know, it, it's hard to say, but it, it's a virtual cinch that he's going to be the early leader in here. There were some doubts about Nick's go going back to the start of the year when he threw in that clunker in the Saudi Cup and then lost as the odds on favorite after that and has returned to the U.S. in the Met Mile. But over his last couple starts, he's just looked invincible once again when he won the Cornhusker and then last time out when he won the Grade 1 Whitney at Saratoga. We'll take a look at the stretch run of that race. He's beating a pretty good field here as Swiss Skydiver took a shot at him. Maxfield's going to be running after him in the stretch of this race. But Nick's go went fast early got a bit of a breather on the far turn and then kicked away in the stretch again. Yeah, there's no doubt. He he went pretty fast. It's not like he was handed the lead in here. Uh, the, the pace fractions mm -hmm. were 130s. He's proven to be able to go faster than that a few times in his career. So no surprise here. Uh, maybe a little bit of concern how he drifted out there. Maybe uh, I don't know if it was so much a tactical decision as it was the horse. Maybe it was the former, so it's not a big deal. But really, that's the only thing I saw in here that gave me the slightest concern. And Craig, I know you're highlighting in his past performances here in Time Form US, just the sheer number of speed figures that he's run that are 130 and above. Uh, if you're not familiar with Time Form US speed figures, uh, 130 is a grade one level horse that's usually dominant in their division. And Nixco has run a 130 or higher multiple times since he's come into the Brad Cox barn. Yeah, exactly. Since he switched to the Brad Cox barn, uh, especially at two turns, uh, his lone not very good race at Belmont Park in the uh, the Met Mile, he didn't run very well, even though he made the lead. I believe that Saudi Cup was also one turn, if I'm not mistaken. But stateside around two turns, he's been unbeatable. He's won all six of his starts, and none of them, none of them have been particularly close. And as you say, when you're running in the 130s, you're almost always winning here in the U.S. Uh, very few horses have consistently run faster than him over the last 10 years even. So uh, this is a distance he's proven to be able to handle. So he's obviously uh, just head and shoulders above this group on paper. Yeah, I think we agree. Given the pace advantage, given his class edge, his speed figure power, he's unlikely to lose this race. But is there anybody that you can get underneath and perhaps in an exacta to create some value here? Because... Uh, the other horse that I know you wanted to highlight, Craig, the number four, Shared Sense, he's coming out of a pretty game victory at Ellis Park as we take a look at his win last time in the Tri-State. Yeah, I liked what I saw from Shared Sense. Uh, he was a horse who had won a couple decent races. He won the Oklahoma Derby here at my local track, Remington Park, with with decent speed figures uh, and he closed out his season with a good third in the discovery behind horses like Forza Oro, Monday morning quarterback who I don't think we've seen since but who was a pretty talented horse his return to the races this year wasn't so good he ran in a small stakes at Indiana Downs uh, didn't really fire that day but his second start off the layoff at Alex Park was uh, really nice in what they called the tri-state overnight stakes 
a very small stakes race, but I think it showed he has plenty in the tank. He had a 115 speed figure that day, final time 119. It was knocked down a little bit for pace, but I just like the visual. And given some of the alternatives in here who are going to take some money, namely Tacitus and Independence Hall, I'm going to play some exactas with him instead of those two. I guess I'm not shocked that you're giving a shout out to last year's Oklahoma Derby winner, but he did look good winning that race. And uh, he's got some upside in a race where I feel like we've already seen the best of a lot of horses in here. Ones like Chess Chief and Sprawl, perhaps even Tacitus and Independence Hall. We basically know what they are at this point. And maybe Shared Sense is a four-year-old that still has some upside towards the end of the season as the other Brad Cox trainee in this race. And we're kind of on the same page about Tacitus, who is the other horse that's predicted to take money on the morning line. I know, Craig, you wanted to highlight his work pattern coming into this race because it's been a little bit erratic. Yeah, it has been. He was a horse who he laid off after running overseas in that same Saudi Cup that I mentioned earlier. And he was working his way back towards the race. And don't get me wrong, on speed figures, he would be the very clear-cut second choice in here. But Bill Mott's not exactly known for bringing horses back, firing off a long layoff. And I don't like that break in his works at all. It looked like he was working towards a race. He was entered once in a weird... Uh, main track only on the turf I think it was but he wound up getting scratched but I think that month gap long in his workouts between the August 15th work and the September 16th is pretty significant and given that uh, it would be really um, out of ordinary for Bill Mott to have this one fully cranked up I think this is probably more a prep for another race maybe he can run second on class alone but at the short price he's going to be why bother so I'm going to go with shared sense as I said earlier and try to get tac Tacitus out of the trifecta yeah, it feels like that's the right strategy in this race, Tacitus. Like you said, he's got prior performances that put him in the mix here. I mean, he was fourth in last year's Breeders' Cup Classic, but given all the questions about him, his preparation coming into this race, the fact that he's already missed some spots that he was supposed to run in this year, mm -hmm. I think it's probably wise to take a wait-and-see approach with him. Personally, I went in a slightly different direction for a horse to use underneath Nick's go as we throw up our picks for this race. I put the number five, Independence Hall, second. I like this horse turning back a little bit from a mile and a quarter. Never really struck me as one that wants to go 10 furlong so i think getting back to a mile and an eighth is going to suit him he ran pretty well behind nick's go early in the year in the pegasus world cup when he was third in that race and since then he's had some stops and starts but now he's second off a layoff after competing in the pacific classic last time i think with just a minor step forward he could pick up the pieces and potentially be second in this race so for me if i was going to play this one it would be a cold two five exacta i imagine craig it's the same for you trying to get shared sets underneath nick's go yeah, the same for me. And maybe if Independence Hall drifted up a bit, if it's anywhere near that morning line, you know, it's possible the exact that would show a little value. But the one I want to avoid is the, the three horse Tacitus in the second spot, which will probably be lucky to pay even money if that. And like I said, I just don't think he's firing. So trying to find some value in a race where it's probably not going to be found on the win end. Post time for the Grade 3 Lucas Classic is 422 Eastern Time at Churchill Downs on Saturday, and all eyes will be on Nick's go as he tries to cement his status as the likely favorite for the Breeders' Cup Classic in a few weeks. Uh, both Craig and I not betting against him, but we'll try to get some prices in underneath in the exacta of this race. You can check out stakes previews of some other races from Churchill Downs, all the stakes from Belmont Park on BRF's YouTube channel from Brad Free, Mike Beard, Dan Ilman, and Craig and I, who covered some weekend racing. So check out all of that as you subscribe to the Daily Racing Forum channel. Thanks for tuning into this video and good luck if you're playing on Saturday.